Hi, my name is Charles Kaplan. I'm a professor at the State University of New York at Old Westbury, and this is the fourth of about seven or eight videos on the normal distribution, the continuous probability distribution that's uh, most studied in a basic probability and statistics class, uh, and then also looked at in a mathematical statistics class. So here's this particular problem. The weights of cans of Bardak pineapple slices Actually, that should be R. R normally distributed with a mean of 1,000 grams and a standard deviation of 50 grams. Find the percentage of cans that weigh, well, let's see, less than 860 grams. Okay. So, we know that the mean is 1,000 grams. We know that the standard deviation is 50 grams. Let's draw the picture. So here's a badly drawn picture of the normal distribution curve with a mean of 1,000. And we want, uh, we're interested in less than 860. So 860 is to this side. And that's the region in which we're interested. These are our x values, and we're going to need to convert to transform these to z values, the standard normal distribution, in order to solve the problem. We know that the mean of the standard normal distribution has a z value of 0. It also has, by the way, a variance of 1. And now we're going to transform 860 from an x, x observation to a z unit of standard deviation. So let's see, z is equal to x minus mu over sigma, that's our formula for the transformation. Our x value is 860, we're going to subtract off the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. Uh, so this works out I think to be negative 140 over 50 and that makes it uh, negative, let's see, z is equal to negative 2.8. So negative 2.8 is our z value there. Well, it, the, the z value here is associated with an area under the normal curve. And let's use our textbook to find that out. So we're going to go over here to the textbook. We're going to go down to 2.8 and over to the first column, which is 0, 0.00. And we see that it's associated with an area under the curve of 0.4974. So let's see what gives now. So that area, that 0.4974 area, that's this area. Uh, that's this area from here to here, okay? The, or actually the arrows should go the other way. Uh, in any event, now it looks like two diamonds. You know, let's do it this way. And let's give them little onyx cufflinks. How's that? <laughs> okay. So this area is 0.4974. The area under the total curve is 1, and the area to the left of the mean is 0.5. So if we take 0.5 and we subtract off this area from 860 to 1,000, that will leave us with this area below 860. So let's do that. 0 0.5 minus 0.4974, that's equal to 0 0.0026. So this area is 0 0.0026. And that's all there is to part A. What we did to recap was we converted, transformed 860 into uh, a z value, which is negative 2.8. And then we looked up the area for z of 2.8 which was this area here from uh, from 1,000 down to 860. That turned out to be 0 0.4974.
I have the area, the total area to the left of the mean. From that, 0.5, we subtracted 0.4974 in this area. And that gave us 0 0.0026. That's the area in the tail. And that should make sense since uh, uh, this negative 2.8 is means that 860, and that's weight in grams, that 860 is 2.8 standard deviations away from the mean of 1,000 grams. So it's, it's pretty unlikely that one of the cans would only have 860 grams of pineapples in it. So let's look at part B to this question. Part B asks what the probability is that the weight will be between 1,055 and 1,100 grams. So we know that the mean mu is 1,000 and sigma, the standard deviation, is 50. Let's draw a fairly big curve here. We know that the mean is 1,000 and we're interested in the area from 1055 to 1100. We're interested in this area right here. So in order to do that, we're going to convert our x values to z values and use the standard normal distribution. We know that the z value of the mean is 0. And let's find the z values associated with an x value of 1055 and 1100. So the transformation formula is z equals x minus mu over sigma. It's 1055 minus 1000 over 50. And that is, let's see, 55 over 50. And that's equal to 1.1. Let's go down a little bit, and z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. Again, I urge you, you should write out the formula, the transformation formula, or whatever formula it is you're using in statistics and probability. It will help you remember them, memorize these formulas. They're used all the time. It will help you when it comes exam time. X minus mu over sigma, we're interested in 1100, so 1100 minus 1000 over 50 is equal to 100 over 50 is equal to 2.0. Okay, now we're going to have areas associated with these values. We're going to have an area from 1000 to 1055, and that's associated with a z value of 1.1. And the 1100 uh, uh, x value is associated with a 2.0 z value. So let's uh, get a textbook out and let's find the area associated with 1.1. You'll see that it's the central region for which we're going to get a uh, an area. So 1.10 is 0 0.3413 in our. Uh, we go down the z column to 1.1 and over to 0 0.00 and that's 0.3643 so let's see 0 0.3643 and then we're going to have an area associated with 1000 to 1100 that's a z value of 2.0 and 2.0 is a number you should be used to hearing that uh, area it's 0.4772 we go down the z column to 2.0 and over 1 to 0 0.00 and that area is 0.4772 and it's a, a famous area so we have 0 0.4772 okay so we know the area now from 1000 to 1100 that's 0.4772 and we know the area from 1000 to 1055 that's 0.3643 so what we're going to do is we're going to take this larger area and we're going to subtract off this smaller area and that will leave us with the shaded area. So let's do that. 
uh, 0 0.4772 minus 0 0.3643 and that works out to be 0 0.1129 so this area this shaded region is 0 0.1129 so let me recap how we did that one we calculated Z values for 1055 and 1100. They turned out to be 1.1 and 2.0. We found the associated areas from 1000 to 1055, it's 0.3643. And from 1000 to 1100, it's 0.4772. And what we did was we took this larger area, subtracted off the smaller area, and that left us with the shaded area. Okay, let's look at part C. Part C asks about the region between 860 and 1055. Well, we calculated the area for 860 in part A. Let's put up a curve here. And then you'll notice, if you've seen more than just the one video here, that I always draw a picture and I always shade in regions because it helps me keep what's going on straight in my head. So we're interested in the area between from 860 to 1055. That's this area. We know that the mean has a Z value of zero. We calculated in part A that the Z value associated with 860 is negative 2.8. And in part B, we calculated that the area, uh, that the Z value associated with 1055 is 1.1, the way we got those z equals x minus mu over sigma so we had 860 minus 1000 over 50 is negative 140 over 50 which is negative one oh, which is negative uh, 2.8 <laughs> negative 2.8 and then z equals x minus mu over sigma and we had 1055 minus 1,000 over 50, which is 55 over 50, and that's 1.1. So that's how we arrived at both these Z values in parts A and B. So this question asks, what's the probability, or what percentage of cans will have between 860 and 1,055 grams? Well, that's just the sum of these two areas. So let's sum these areas. If you recall, uh, this area to the left of the mean is 0 0.4974. And this area here to the right is 0 0.3643. So the total area is 0 0.4974 plus 0 0.3643 and if we add those up that comes to 0 0.8617 so that's the total area from 860 to 1055 is 0 0.8617 okay so I hope you found this video helpful. It's on the normal distribution. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you left some favorable comments. Um, again, my name is Charles Kaplan. This is the fourth of probably seven or eight videos on the normal distribution. And I wish you all good health, good happiness, and a whole lot of luck. Bye-bye.